In this video, we're going to do a bit of a deep dive on the PyDrive implementation to give you a better understanding of how this feature is supported under both the Linux side and the Apple II side. So let's first show you where the PyDrive disk images actually reside. If we go to the share, the user share directory of the Apple II Pi, if I can spell right, we'll do a long listing of the files that are in this share directory. You will notice that there are two files, a2vd1.po and a2vd2.po, which in fact are symbolic links to other files. The first one is the a2pi-1.6.po, which up here, this is our uh, Apple II Pi client disk image that uh, on previous versions of the Apple II Pi were required to actually be on the physical floppy disks that you would boot from. The second one is a utils disk image down here, which is just a kind of random collection of programs and whatnot that I put together that you could find uh, to be somewhat useful. The fact that these are links makes it easy to change them in and out. So for instance, if we want to change our second Pi drive, our D2, so this is what it stands for, Virtual Disk 2, Virtual Disk 1, is there is a script that will go in and change what this symbolic links to so that you can change what the Apple II sees as a way of sort of swapping out your disk image uh, on the fly while your Apple II uh, is running. Now, they have to be the .po, so that's the ProDOS order uh, file, uh, because the Apple II Pi daemon isn't super duper smart. It only knows how to contend with uh, the very simple .po disk image format. It does not have to be just 140 kilobytes. It can be anything up to 32 megabytes. You will see that this is a, a two megabyte disk image, this utils.po. Our A2Pi client disk image is indeed just the 143K floppy disk image so that you could easily write that out to a boot floppy uh, for booting off of your five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. Let's see what the Apple II side of the equation looks like. So we're gonna go back to our Apple II Let's change our video output to show our Apple II's composite video. Here we are running the Apple II Pi client on the Apple II. Everything that we type on the keyboard is being sent to Unix. We can see that it's uh, given us this message. What we actually want to do is exit out of this Apple II Pi client so that we can interact directly with our Apple II from the keyboard. With that, we do the open and closed Apple keys together with the delete key. And this, along with a little extra key that gets sent uh, to, the, to the input handler, will return us now back to just Apple II. From here, we can return to ProDOS and here we will see the Apple II Pi client disk image 
from uh, again being uh, provided by the Pi drive. Here's the RAM drive. And here's that utils. Okay. So this shows off our floppy disk, our physical floppy disk, which has a little work in progress project I was working on. But we also have our Pi drives that show up under ProDOS. So the Pi drive implementation has been around uh, since the early days of the Apple II Pi project. What was interesting is that by doing a simple little boot ROM implementing just the simple Pi drive protocol of the Apple II Pi full protocol, is we could have our Apple II boot right off of the Pi drives being supplied by the Apple II Pi daemon under Linux. And as long as our Pi drives included the Apple II Pi client disk image in its drive one, then we would get the automatic boot uh, into the Apple II Pi client software on the Apple II connecting to our Linux Apple II Pi daemon and just appearing to be just a standard keyboard and mouse device to Linux. But again, going back and looking at this from the Apple II perspective, let's move on over to this utils and we have a directory called sysutil which is the uh, ProDOS system utilities program which we can run directly off of the Pi drive and we can show the volumes we can do everything we would normally do under ProDOS so this is a um, way to just show that uh, our two Pi drives, since our Pi is in slot 7, we can see that the Apple II Pi client is in drive 1, the utils disk volume is in drive 2, and the work in progress is in the a physical floppy disk on, the, uh, on, on our drive, our floppy drive. So from here, we can run, we can copy files around, we can do everything we would normally do with our Apple II under ProDOS. And that's one thing to kind of mention is that the Apple II Pi, Apple II environment really is ProDOS focused. It's not so much for DOS 3.3 or any other operating system. It really is meant to work with ProDOS disks and ProDOS volumes. So that's one of the minor limitations, but because ProDOS just offers so much more functionality, it uh, and it works well with the Linux environment in that it has subdirectories just like Linux does. It, it makes for a nice easy match between the, the two technologies. Let's get out of our system utilities. And we can return back. We still have all of our Apple II volumes. Let's go ahead and return to Linux. And in order to do that, we'll need to rerun the Apple II plight. Apple II Pi client. So here we just start basic and that will load and run the client software just like that. Now we can return back to do, uh, back to Linux. Our keyboard is still active.
we noticed that uh, I included some other disk images for the GS emulator. One of them, this is the bare bones Apple II GS with Apple Talk enabled .po file. So we can actually use that to link to our actual Pi drive if we want to explore that from the Apple II. There is a script that will go in and allow us to change the links for our virtual drive assignments. So let's try that. And we're going to set drive 2 to be but we have to do it as a super user. Just doing it as our normal user doesn't give us enough permissions. So when we do this, we have to prepend it with the SU, DO, so sudo. This will tell Linux that we're gonna run this with uh, more permissions. And now we can see that our drive two maps to this other disk image. So let's go back to our Apple II. We're still running our client. So let's exit out of our Apple II client program. Back to ProDOS. Now we notice we have a new disk image showing up. This is the GSOS with Apple Talk enabled drive image. We can see all of its directories. Now a lot of this is using GSOS, so this won't really run very well on our Apple IIe, but we can still use ProDOS to go through all of its files. Uh, some of them actually are 8-bit ProDOS aware. Uh, for instance, here's Merlin 8. So that's one we can run. Let's look at... We can actually run Merlin. Let's try that for fun. We'll load Merlin. So, there you go. We can catalog, see the files. exit back to ProDOS. So this is how we can swap out the virtual disk images for our Apple II on the fly. Again, let's go back to the router back to Linux. Our keyboard connects us to our terminal window again. We'll list our files. We'll do the long list so we can see what we're connected to. We can reroute our second drive back to our original Now when we list, we can see we're back to our utils directory again, and uh, back to those uh, programs that were available under the Apple II. So that's a quick overview of what the Pi Drive implementation looks like from both the Apple II side of things and the Linux side of things and how we're able to boot our Apple II directly into the Apple II Pi client
with this new version of the Apple II Pi card or as well using a super serial card that has the custom boot ROM installed on that. So either one of those options will allow you to boot directly off of the uh, Apple II Pi card or the super serial card into the Apple II Pi environment. So I hope that uh, answers a couple questions about how the Pi drives are implemented and how you can use them under both the Linux and Apple II environments. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.